Ahern Fieldhouse, the site of K-State, Oregon State, a matchup of two red-hot teams to begin this season. The Big 12 beats the Pac-12 tonight in the Little Apple. Brian Smother with former Wildcat All-American Liz Wagner-Bush. Let's get to the starting lineups for tonight's matchup. That features two teams with only one blemish on the year. Great matchup of two primary outside hitters and Maddie Goings leading the way for Oregon State. And Kylie Zubach, who's been one of the leading hitters of the Big 12, leading the way for the Wildcats. King State setter Sarah Dixon riding a Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week honor. And Maddie Sheehan in her first year running the show for the Beavers is the setter for Oregon State. As mentioned before, Liz Wagner Bush alongside. Liz, what do you have for the keys to victory here tonight for both of these two squads? Yeah, we'll start out with K State, and they need to really start hot tonight. Don't let Oregon State in this game. Just they have a tendency in the second set to kind of put their foot off the pedal a little bit. So don't give Oregon State an, an opportunity to, to get hot. And then second, they just need to minimize their errors. They've been doing so far this season, really have been making very little errors but here at home especially against this team they need to really minimize those errors for oregon state they need to serve tough they got to get k-state out of a uh, system and uh and not give them an opportunity to set up their hot hitters and zumok and mutiri and then second defend those pins again you know they have to stop julian's zumok and mutiri at the pins uh, in order to be successful tonight Kansas State's coming off a matchup and a win over North Texas earlier today. And straight sets, 25-18, 25-18, 25-21. Oregon State early this morning, the first matchup of this K-State Invitational, knocked off Omaha in straight sets, 25-17, 32-30, and then 25-23. If you look at Oregon State and what they've done this year, they already have a win over a Big 12 team at Iowa State that was in Ames, and the Beavers, uh, a team that was picked you know, 10th in a 12-team Pac-12, they, they may have surprised a few people here at the outset. Yeah, they they're, they definitely have the potential to surprise a lot of teams. You know, that, that Pac-12 is so deep, and there's so many teams night in, night out that they're playing against that has only made them a better team. They're, they're ready to go out and battle. So certainly going into Iowa State and knocking off them on their home court isn't too surprising, I, I think, from a, an aspect of what they do night in and night out. Now, we'll see what this Oregon State team is all about. They are coached by Mark Barnard, who is now exchanging greetings with Susie Fritz. Barnard, an Aussie, he is a native of Australia, and the phenomenal part of what he has been able to do, you think he's been a longtime assistant at Oregon State, now third year as a head coach, but when he, his last year as an assistant, they won six matches. And now 12, then 21 last year, and now they're off and rolling this year. Yeah, it's phenomenal, uh, kind of that flip that he's been able to do with the program. And it really says a lot for what he expects out of this team. Well, we'll see if matching up against Susie Fritz, the two-time Big 12 Coach of the Year for the Wildcats, all-time winningest coach in the history of the K-State program. We'll see how the Cats handle the matchup with Oregon State. These two teams played a year ago up in Corvallis, part of an Oregon State tournament there, and it was a straight set win for the Beavers, 18, 19, and 20 over K-State. So they really handled the Wildcats in that matchup in the Oregon State Invitational. And now the rematch here this year. The all-time series, K-State trails one to three. And the bowl win for the Wildcats coming some time ago. And it was here in this building. So the Wildcats will try and keep their undefeated start at home going. Now 2-0 in the friendly confines. Gloria Mutiri, talented freshman that has added to this offensive attack that leads the Big 12 with a team hitting percentage of 286 coming into play here tonight. Goings will start at the back row, the OH1 for Oregon State. And we're about ready to go in front of a good crowd at a Hurton Field House, the historic home of King State Volleyball. Mutiri's first swing off the block is a kill, and the freshman gets it started. It's a great start by Fairfield there with that pass, and great option there by Dixon to get Mutiri started early. Both of these teams pride themselves on the serve in the pass, been able to document or dictate tempo based on serve and serve receive right side swing for Gravely one of the middle blockers for Oregon State back to Butiri Underwood's first swing popped up on the back line by Massey who's a very good D 
defensive player. Shooting on to the front row, unable to finish. Knocked over the block on a miracle dive by Dixon. She then gets up and beats Shulian, who finishes. This is exactly what K-State needs to do. They're playing amazing defense behind their block. They're not giving Oregon a State a chance, really, to go up there and, and get a free, free clean hit. That was a great turn by the Wildcats, no doubt. Macy Flowers to serve. Near an overpass, the Wildcats will play it. Back to Underwood on the left side. Maybe Underwood, or under down, I should say. Unable to get it down. Under down, that was headed out, but she played it instinctively, and it ends up as a point for Mutiri. I have to note that Macy Flowers, a middle blocker, doesn't play much back row, made a phenomenal dig earlier in this match and really gave him a chance to win that point. Well, she has started in rotation as the server for the Wildcats and has ripped off three straight. Goings in the back line, blocked straight down and a terrific start for the Wildcats. Yeah, El sanbothi has been so good with her block. Very patient in the timing of, of blocking a back row attack is just a little bit different. Does a really nice job. Flowers still serving. Again, another joust above the net. Julians gets a good run at it. And finally, Oregon State sides out. A great start by the Wildcats to run four points there early on. Let's see how Oregon State's able to respond. McKenna Brown, junior from Colorado, defensive specialist into the back row to serve. Zumach steps in front of Fairfield, misplays the serve receive. And the Wildcats in a bind from the get-go. Yeah, out of system play there. Dixon tries to throw it up for Shulians, but a little wide. Not much you could do there. Nice serve by Oregon State. Pick it on Zumach. Goes right at her again. Nutiri with a strong finish. Yeah, Nutiri's got a big hole in that block. Oregon State's not closing. And that gives her a chance to sneak that ball in there and really get some zip on it. Yeah, Shell, who just rotated in up front. And it's Hardy on the swing block. And now Mutiri to serve. An overpass. And the Wildcats unable to handle it. Shudians went up with the, the center, Sheehan but was unable to control it. Sheehan does a nice job of pushing last there against Julian. Long run for Dixon. Julian's trying to cut it right at that three meter line. Mutiri with the dig. And then Julian's into the block. Bennett who just came in along with Shell and suddenly the Beavers within a point. Julian's getting a lot of swings here early on. We'll see if she's able to respond, calm down here a little bit, try to hit those high hands like she did earlier this week. Slide for San Bothy. That's walled back by the Beavers. Miscommunication, Mutiri with a pass across. Bennett, I think that was Bennett, calling for the ball. Julian's off her own head, out of bounds. Seven swings already for Shulians, not one for Zumog. Now part of that's the rotation that K-State has started in, but it has left the Wildcats best weapon sidelined, and Shulians giving the heavy lifting right now, only one kill, three errors. She'll get another. And able to change up her attack. A smart play by Shulian. She still puts a little bit of top spin on it, so it just rolls right there into the heart of the court. Smart play by Shulians. One of the many seniors. Bennett on the left side, wide of the mark, and a point for K-State. We'll see if Oregon State takes advantage of Dixon being in the front line. Shulians back to serve. Shulians leads K-State with nine service aces. 
Had one earlier today, three the other night against Missouri State. Shulians received that shot from Morgan State, but passed it over the net. And she'll come out. Riley Colleen is in defensively, as you see Shell gets credit for the kill. Service here. And a set out over to K-State. Flowers into the front row with almost Zubak for K-State. And now back to serve Sophie Gimesh. Back up middle hitter is Gimesh. And now really most of the time serving in as a serving specialist. And just long. Boy, that looked pretty good. That did look pretty good. <laughs> There is a challenge system that's available for this match if K-State wanted it, but it didn't look like Wildcats wanted any part of that. Well, maybe just out. Pretty close. Zubok's first swing, and she gets a kill. Nice job by Dixon being front row. She's able to isolate that middle and make her late uh, by jump setting that ball and really gives Zubok a nice opportunity for one-on-one. -on -one. Dixon does not have offensive numbers that would incline you to think that she's going to do that. But you mentioned just the mere threat with the jump is enough. Goings tools the block. Good line shot by the OH1 of Oregon State. Came in averaging 3.5 kills a set at Goings, but hitting just 150 from the left. I mean, Zumach at 4.2 kills per set on the left for K-State and hitting around 300. Here's Butiri. From the back line, dug up by Colleen. Flowers gets it to the middle of the court. A chance to tie for the Beavers, and they do! Bradley up the middle. Nice set by Sheehan. Really, she was off the, the net at the 10-foot line, was able to push that quick middle. Nice seam there. But a pretty good block, too. K-State just not quick enough to get there. Yeah, just a little late. Again, grab it. This time, blocked back by Flowers. Out of her left. Going! Just roofed! And we see that Zumach didn't switch back with Mutiri, and she's staying on the right side and able to set up a nice block. Pushes her hands into the court last minute there. Great block by Zumach. So Zumach into the back line and now to serve. Goings hard into the block. Nobody covers. Susie Fritz up near the court, not happy at all. King State had a perfect opportunity there, got exactly what they wanted. Yeah, great touch by the block. Those are plays that King State has to take advantage of. Quick set to Flowers, and wristing away, she hits it long. And the Beavers have their first lead of set one. Another close one there on the line. In real time, it looked out. No argument. Back to Flowers, didn't get it over. And the Wildcats a bit out of sorts. And the Beavers, after down 4 nothing to start, have come back to take a 12-10 advantage. Right now, Muteri has a hot hand. We'll see if Dixon gets her the ball. She does, and she's blocked! Goings and Gravely. And the Beavers on a 4-0 run force a K-State timeout. K-State can't give them any easy shots. They gotta go up there and, and hammer away. There will be no, not many that'll just simple roll shots are going to fall in. Shulians gets a clean look. Tough night starting for Shulians anyway. She's had, got stuck in a rotation early. Got a lot of swings. But now has three kills and is back to an even zero hit percentage. Three kills, three errors, nine attempts. Flowers, good aggressive serve. Forced over the net by Shell. K-State scrambles. Either did not quite get in system there. Chance for the Beavers. Gravely blocked back. 
A throw to the back line by Underdown is well too long, and K-State gets the point. Nice job by K-State. They didn't give up on that play. And then Sanbothi and Julian's both were clear off the net, run back up, get a nice block, and get Oregon State out of system. This is the rotation that K-State ran some points on, but Flowers unable to keep it rolling this time, hits into the net. K-State coming off a match on Tuesday night where they hit nine service aces. So far, no aces, two errors in set one. <laughs> Shulians with back-to-back -back great swings for the left. Shulians matched up against the setter for Oregon State. Nice job taking advantage of that line shot. Good adjustment by her. Julian's walked out of Silver Lake High School as the all-time leader in Kansas history and kills. Quick set to the middle. The Wildcats got a hand on it, then chase it down to the back row. Under down, though, comes back and finishes. You like the fight that you see from K-State. They're not giving up on plays. They're sticking with it. Two kills for under down, who like Julian's. That was the bevy of swings in the early going. So the two other outside hitters, not the primary options, leading the way. Now miscommunication in the back line again results in a good serve for Oregon State. That's their first ace. And the Wildcats will bring in Jackie Smith into the back line to help out defensive specialist in for Butiri. That gives them an option to shift Trulions out of the passing rotation. Try to just give Oregon State something, something different to look at. Pick it on Zumach, not a great receive. Dixon did well to just get a hand on it. And a misfire. Oh, right, Gravely looked like she thought it was gonna be quick, and it wasn't. Michelle, or Sheehan coming over to talk with head coach Mark Barnard about that play. That was a great opportunity there for Oregon State, really lengthened this lead late. But Underdown takes care of it, reigning from the center of the stripe. And she does a cross and comes across the middle and only has one blocker up. And a service there. Side out back over to K-State. Oregon State with two mistakes has left the Wildcats still in the match. Or in the set, I should say. Underdown in the back line. Goings and Underdown both in the back row. Top two hitters on the outside, on the left anyway. Yemesh. And another service there. Well, the Cats can't get out of their own way. Susie Fritz with a look of disgust, staring down at the court. Serving specialist with two errors. Now you like to be aggressive and go for it, but you also, as a serving specialist, don't want to be missing those serves. Massey, sophomore libero. Zubak, big swing and a finish. That's just the second attack of the night for Zubak. That for, has to change. Yeah, two for two so far. Really, when she's been in the front row, hasn't had an opportunity to really take a swing. If they can get her going here, we'll see how K-State can maybe turn this around. Still in it, down only two points, but hitting 0-95. Uh, largely because they haven't been able to get it to Zubak. Dixon out left. Zubak cuffs it over the block. Hogan State all over it to Bennett. Long run. No one gets there in time to get it over the net. Dixon got a hand on it, but not playable for Butiri. And Oregon State earns the point. Wildcats laid 4 0 to start. The Beavers showing a little bit of poise and now serving. Kayla Ellis, senior defensive specialist. Thierry hard to the block and out. Nice job on Muteri. That block was set up pretty good in front of her. Does a good job just tooling. High hands. Three kills from Muteri, hitting 333. The freshman. 
out of Sand Springs, Oklahoma. Serve was headed out by Zumach, played by Oregon State. Now Goings shoots it out. They're going to give a touch on the block. And that'll be a point to the Beavers. Yeah, Terry was waving her hand saying, I didn't touch it, but I think Macy was like, I think I got a hand on that one. Not much argument from the Wildcats. Shulians, hard swing, dug out though. Uteri goes up on an overpass on the set from Sheehan that went over the net and drills it down. Smart play by Uteri. Those, those plays are often ones that you get a little overzealous and make an error. It's just a nice job just getting it down on the floor. Bradley up the right line. Beavers with a three-point lead in serving. Four away from a set one win. Back to Shulians. Great up in the back line by Goings. Out left, under down. Dixon covers behind the block. Another good dig. Put up in the air by Oregon State. And finished on the overpass by Shell. Wow, some phenomenal digs in the back row by Oregon State. K-State was going up there firing, firing away, but just stayed in it. Second and final time out of this set burned by the Wildcats. Of those defensive transitions and makes all the world a difference. If you're going to look at the two teams and what the difference is, that's it right now. Serve receive and digging and passing for K-State is just not very good. On cue, the Wildcats struggle. Tip over the block, K-State gets to it. and still scrambling around. Shulian's well off into the double block. And then under down hits wide. Oh, Mark Barnard very upset. Felt like there was a front row or back row attack. By Dixon. She's in the back row, but she jumped in front of the 10-foot line to play the ball, but I think they're saying she didn't go over the, the net. She is only 5'9". <laughs> <laughs> Not on the woods yet or the Wildcats. You do have a couple of notable and memorable comebacks this year down big points late in sets. Shell rejected back. Alertly played by Shulians. Sanbothi hard into the block. Again, put up in the back line by Going. She'll hit from that. Kicked up by Sanbothi. Shulians then misses wide of the mark. That's a great heads up play by Sanbothi. Too bad Shulians wasn't able to find that deep corner on that shot. Would have been a fantastic momentum turning rally. Perfectly legal. Yep. Whatever it takes. Shooting us just long. Two points away are the Beavers. And San Bofi missiles one out of bounds. Set point number one for the Beavers. Now the Wildcats won two matches at Hawaii to begin the year. And their only loss to this point was in Straight sets to Marquette, who's down the top 25. And having not seen Marquette, you can't really compare too much to it, but you got to think Oregon State is up there as far as the best opponent that K-State has faced to this point. Set point number two after this Sam Bofi kill. Got to win by two. Cats would need four straight. And they won't get it. Bennett with the finishing touch on a 25-20 opening set win. The Wildcats, the Big 12's best offensive team, hit just 086 in set one. With serve, and it's Riley Killeen who will start on the floor in that rotation for the Wildcats. Popped up by Fairfield. There's Zumok, and she's walled to the ground by the setter, Sheehan. 
Kamani with Bradley. Zumach was trapped a little bit. That was a tight set. She didn't have much to go, much room to get that around Sheehan's hands. But nice job by Sheehan not being tooled. And Bothy rattles it through the block. K-State really has three middles that could start, and they rotate between San Bothy, Flowers, and Peyton Williams match to match. Peyton Williams we should see later tonight, I would think. Yes. Gibesh another middle, but really only in this rule now, serving. Two errors so far for Gimesh and two serves. Handled well by Oregon State. Picks it on the run, puts it up high left for Zuma. Under down, well off the net. And the miscommunication by the Beavers. Really the first time they've looked out of sorts. I like that option there by the setter, though. She was trying to get Goins in the back row. She has a nice back row attack. But again, like you said, just some miscommunication there. Uh, reading the lips of Mark Barnard. Came to talk with Maddie Sheehan. Looked like going to the back row was not an option on that play. There's Zumach. Smart play by Zumach. Adding that little shot there will help open up that block as they continue to play. Every once in a while, I need one of those. If you're going to be all power from the left. What a good serve from Gimesh. Goings does well on that play. From that 10 meter line, or from the 10 foot line, I should say, 3 meter line, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Sheehan does a really nice job. She sets that pretty quick, you know, so Goings is able to get on it pretty fast and doesn't allow that block to really get set up. Former Fort Worth Player of the Year, just a short flight away from Manhattan, Kansas on those regional flights from Manhattan Regional Airport. In the DFW area. Under down. And a big hammer. Under down, along with Shulians, did not come in with the highest amount of attacks on the season, but under down has doubled goings here in the early going as far as swings from the left. And it's made the most of it. Flowers. And she'll get the kill. Yeah, again, smart play. Just keep it in, in play and give yourself a chance to set, set up and play some defense. Well, that's not the bread and butter of Flowers, but it is something that she's worked on quite a bit. Susie Fritz in the offseason telling us that Flowers had improved her slide attack. Under down through the block of Zumok and Flowers. Uh, under down has been impressive. 6'1 junior from Temecula, California. Transfer from Northeastern. She was not on the team last year, but was a first team all Colonial League selection at Northeastern. Terry blocked back. She'll get another swing, and this time finish. <laughs> Nice job by Terry, the freshman. You know, it's easy to go up when you get blocked the first time, and the second time that gets in your head a little bit, does a nice job. She sees the seam there and just able to slip it through that block. Good take by Zumak. But then miscommunication as Flowers tries to hit the pass and cuts off her own setter. Yeah, we've noticed a few times here, K-State's had a little bit of those miscommunication. Someone needs to step up in those situations and take charge. Bump set out for Mutiri. Crawled over the net, but didn't touch anybody. Well, they are going to give a point. They did give a touch. Susie Prince was up, ready to review it. Those replays a little late later in the play. Earlier before that, there was the touch. <laughs> Julian's way over everyone. A 
it's a tough hit there by Shulians. Way off the net. Sets coming from the back line. She doesn't need to snap that wrist a little bit, get a little more top spin on it. One on one, Goings, Walls, Mutiri. Nice fast set by Dixon. You'd think that Mutiri was going to be able to crush that, but Goings does a nice job of just pressing her hands and sealing that net. Another chance for Mutiri. This time, able to get over the top. Good adjustment by Mutiri. Again, that set was a little tight for her, but she flicks her wrist and gets it down the line. Some smart play by Mutiri here early in the second set. Seven kills for Mutiri. Five digs already as well for the freshman. Good aggressive serve. Shouldered up by San Bopi. Goings dug out by Fairfield. Right, every tip all seems like Oregon State is all over it. Good rally here. Shulian's off the back line, and the finish goes to K-State. Yeah, better shot by Shulian. She hits it high still, but is able to make Oregon State make a decision on that. Got some hands on the block. Flower, San Bopi, hanging in the air, able to block down Gravely. Oh, yeah. State pushes ahead by two. Oregon State won the first, 25-20. Dixon probably not who you necessarily want, trying to kill that overpass, and it ends up Oregon State finishing it on the right side. A heads up play by Sheehan. She able to react and get that ball to Goings on the right. Julian's another big swing and another kill. Well, forced to set Shulians probably more than they wanted to. To her credit, she is stepping up. Six kills for Shulians. Low hit percentage, but starting to come around. Gravely with a rocket up the right line on that slot attack. Yeah, Rin State's really trying to get their middles going. Nice set there, gives her that line option. Oregon State missing one of their top middle hitters in Corey Cheshire, a Richard senior. And they haven't missed much of a beat. Service there. The third of the night for Oregon State. Brown a little too lengthy. And now Gimesh in for the Wildcats. K State has served better, it seems, in the second set, but haven't had much to show for it. Good serve received team and the Beavers awaits. Goings, as I say that, misplays. The serve received has to try and clean it up from the back line. Dixon, a long way to go to get it up for Zumach and an easy block for Shell. Now that's a tough play to time your block with, but Shell does a nice job of pressing those hands over late. Zumach touched by the block of Oregon State. So Zumach gets kill number four. A much better in system play for Zumach gives her an opportunity to use that block, hit those high hands. Zumach got her a fast start. A little tougher sledding here in the second set. Oregon State probably understanding that they're going to try and get her going. Wildcats lucky to get. A hand on that one, but it's out of bounds. Under down again. 
on the right side. Kind of in a scramble out of system play, does a nice job hitting it through the block. Way off the net, Zumach just cuffs one over. And a tool to block by Bennett. And Oregon State started to do whatever they want on the offensive side. You gotta feel like that was a missed opportunity. A little out of system for Oregon State. And Colleen had an opportunity there, just couldn't control that dig. Better received by Zumach there. But Utiri roofed by the Beavers. And that's the killer. When you do get a good pass, when you do get a good serve receive, the Wildcats unable to turn that into a point. The Beavers with a big block, seven blocks by Oregon State. Dixon does well to get it back in play. Zumach block, kept up by Dixon. I think we might get a lift called. Well, four hits, they'll say it ricocheted <laughs> as it came down and therefore led to four hits. Yeah, the state might burn a timeout here. It kind of rolled around a little bit on Zumach as it. The Prince will let it ride. Utiri trying to tip. Morgan State is on it. And a misplay in the back line, a rare mistake by the Beavers. Almost being a little bit too aggressive in the back row for Oregon State. I think as a coach, you'd rather see that than them just letting the ball fall between two players. Underdown might have been in position, but you're right. Massey had to cover that as a libero. Quick set middle, the Wildcats have done better on that. But Oregon State has done much better at that. Here in the second set, another block for the Beavers up front, and we hit a timeout. Beavers by two, looking for a two-set to none lead in a little apple. See him at the football game tomorrow. Mississippi State in town take on the Wildcats and a big one on ESPN. Flowers on a quick tip or a quick shot at the middle, but un unable to finish, and then a tip back by Oregon State just over the block of Flowers. And Peyton Williams in up front now for K-State. Yeah, we had to know that that was likely going to happen. Just, again, trying to see if this option will work a little bit better for K-State. Dixon goes to Butiri, rattled through the block, played by the Beavers. Sheehan sits up left, blocked. Back over, the Beavers stay out left to Goings. Quick set, Williams. Beavers go right to Bennett. A throw to the back corner. Heady shot by Bennett. Oregon State's lead is four. Yeah, Bennett caught Fairfield sneaking up, trying to get that short tip. And Zumach just can't run down that deep corner shot. And a timeout going to be called by K-State. Done so well here in the early going. They're really being pushed by an Oregon State team that doesn't make many mistakes. I know offensively they don't put up the numbers, but defensively they seem to cover everything and make you work. Yeah, they, they're not afraid to kind of take chances and kind of defensively roll with it. And then their offense has been able to, you know, make dividends out of that uh, just by being more aggressive in the back row. Through the odds. Unable to finish for the left, back to Bennett, who's been effective from the right side, and into the net call on Shudian. That's frustrating, I'm sure, for Shudian. You know, they're trying to get a stop at the net, and an error like that is just a killer for momentum here. Serve out of bounds, and another point for K-State to set out to their side. For more on what the Wildcats were talking about in their huddle the moment ago, let's go to Anna Christensen, who's on the sidelines. Thanks, Brian. Just in the huddle right now, Coach Susie Fritz urging players to execute on things they've been working on in practice. She certainly seems frustrated with the mistakes that have been going on and said that every player needs to step up instead of blaming it on teammates. So we'll see how that goes for the rest of the set. Back to you, Brian. All right, thank you, Anna. Well, that can happen sometimes when you get to a, you get pushed a little bit. You know, what are you made of? Are you going to take ownership or are you going to push blame elsewhere, point a finger at someone? 
Yeah, you really like to see the seniors on this team kind of take charge. We talked about that a little bit earlier, just those miscommunications so often. They just need someone really to step in that role. And I, I see Zumox really got to do that. You know, saw her earlier in the week really kind of taking charge, being more vocal and a little bit quiet here tonight. Well, it had a tough stretch this morning, did Zumok. Dump over the net, and Sheehan drops it in. And moving forward for K-State, they really, those sort of plays, just they can't let teams do that to them. They've really got to fight hard to try to be more defensively minded and stop plays like that. I know that's a focus of Coach Fritz for sure. Now Shulian's getting all those swings will come out. Bryn Carlson will come in. King State trying to change things up. Whatever it takes. Yep. Oregon State hitting 345 in this set. And both he got a tremendous run. There wasn't going to be much the block could do with that. Everything in rhythm on that one. Sam, Sam both he's so good off one foot. We'd like to see them be able to get her going a little bit more in the front row. Bradley palmed up by Colleen. Under down long, and one of the few mistakes by the Beavers tonight. All started with Killeen's nice palm save, giving Zumach a chance. You hear Coach Fritz on the sideline telling her, pleading with her team to do their job. Good start by Killeen. A little bit of a mistake in the back row for Oregon State, an opportunity perhaps for the Wildcats, San Bopi. Didn't quite get on it the way she did before. And Blunt comes back with a big block on Underdown. Well, down five. The Wildcats get two in a row. And both able just to close that block last second there. Underdown was trying to rip it cross court. Just dropped that left hand. Near race. Played well by Oregon State, but another block! Zumach and Sambolfi, and a timeout for the Beavers. Three in a row by the Wildcats, who used a big turn of around, come from behind, set to on Tuesday for a big win. And back-to-back -back blocks have all the momentum on the purple and white side. Yes, you definitely feel that momentum starting to swing K-State's way. See if they can take advantage of that. Use that momentum to propel them here. Both teams have put up huge block numbers in this second set. Six blocks in this set for Oregon State. Now three for the Wildcats. So that's six for the night for the K-State team and nine for the Beavers. The attack air is now piling up for both teams with all those blocks. 17 attack errors for K-State, which is an unwieldy number and one that is usually maybe for a whole night you know, at the 17, but 17, we're not even done with the second set. That's quite a few, and you know, credit Oregon State's block for contributing to that and then no getting question. in their heads a little bit. But also, K-State's been out of system, and they've just not been eliminating those errors, which are so vital in this rally score game. So three in a row for K-State. Can they keep it going? Four or four in a row, I should say, for the Wildcats. And of course, that timeout. Colleen, native of Honolulu. Bradley a tip. Utiri into the net. K-State doesn't get it over. 
much better defensive effort by K-State. I think effort would be the word that is accurate. Uh, not that they weren't playing hard to begin, but they are playing much harder, flying around much more here in the second set. Trying to match the passing abilities of the Beavers. Serving with Brown. And both be blocked, but out. Four kills for San Bofi. Hitting 375, four digs and five blocks for San Bofi already. Mesh, one of the better servers for K-State. Can she make a difference here? Does. Mistake by the Beavers in the service seat. Goings from behind the line. Out left to Zumok. Blocked but out. And it's a one-point set. Number six for Zumok. Nice job. High hands off the middle blocker's hands. Goings, another attack from the pipe. Zumok tips, and it falls in. And we are tied. And Oregon State will use their final timeout. A 7-1 to one run by the Wildcats to close in this second set. Really credit the defensive effort by K-State, not only blocking, but just in the back row, the palm saves. A lot more fire, you can tell. They're, they're really willing themselves to, to finish this set uh, strong. You know, digging balls a lot better, passing just a lot better. And then the serve. I mean, K-State doesn't have an ace tonight, but the serve has been critical here in the second set. Yeah, Oregon State's getting a little tight, and they're making more errors on their serve receive. Oregon State, a team that really had no issues with Obama can't serve in that first set, passing it will. K-State has outdug the Beavers 36 to 25, but that doesn't really tell the story. Such a difference with fans. When you talk to people about, you see that number, it may be casual observer of volleyball, you're like, oh, K-State's playing great on pass in the back line. And not an old story. Digs do not tell the story of serve receive and pass, pass percentage. Wildcat fans enjoying the timeouts. It's a little cooler in here tonight. A little more enjoyable, Thankfully, I yeah, think, for no the fans. <laughs> and no air conditioning here in the old barn. So in the Midwest and early September, it can be quite humid, but with all the rain that's been through this week, a cool night. Rather comfortable inside a hern. Under down, just over the net, a chance for K-State to go in front. It's Zubak, throw the block! A 4-0 run, part of a larger 8-1 run by K-State. And now they're two points away from tying this thing up. He mentioned another jump float. Better service receive that time. Under down, a good swing. Cats insist and they go quick to Williams! Dixon doing a great job making smart decisions, getting her headers involved. You would have thought she was going to go to Zumok, but great way to mix it up and get Williams involved. Yeah, I was with you. Thought it was going to Zumok all the way. Bradley out, and K-State comes from behind and wins the second set. 6-0 run to... That's a new career best. So she's closing in on her first ever double-double. What does set three have in store? It's become a best of three now. Butiri first up. 
Out over to Underdown. Blocked down by Sanbofi and Mutiri. That's block number six for Sanbofi. Great finish there for Sanbofi. Just to press those hands nice and low. Underdown's trying to sneak that ball on that sharp angle. Sanbofi just six foot, but just jumps right out of the gym. Another block, touched the hands of Gakats, but it goes out of bounds. You see Oregon State trying to take advantage of Dixon up there blocking. 5-9 setter for the Cats. Well, a misplay and a serve receive and an ace for Oregon State. Julians has been struggling here with her passing. We'll see if they yep. push her out. Yep. yep. Case State's going to do that. Susie Fritz will not rotate out Julians, but rotate out Mutiri. But as Liz pointed out earlier, that pushes Julians up front out of that back line. Ace a moment ago, the second of the night for Oregon State. Seeing both be blocked. Bumped out left for Shulians. That was played by the Beavers. I'm not so sure it would have been four hits. It ends up a point anyway for OSU. You just got to keep playing through that until the ref calls the whistle. Underdown. Six kills for Underdown, but six errors. Goings, a little off the net. Zubak got it up, but Fairfield has a long run to get to it. And the Cats unable to get a swing. Bennett tight and out of bounds. Someone got put inside a coffin there on that right side. That's such a tough play as a right-handed hitter on the right side to be able to adjust to that. Right, that sets too far out. You're in trouble. Ball was headed towards us, which is not a good thing. Let's see if K-State gets credit for an ace on that. Left-handed Shell able to knock it over the net. You'd like to see K-State's defense recognize that that set is just a little high and be ready for those out-of-system plays like that. Fairfield unable to handle the serve from Massey. Bennett big into the block. Bennett with seven kills now. Let's see if K-State can get a pass here. Just not passing well here early this third set. Better from Fairfield. Sam Bothy hard into the block and unreachable for the Beavers. Sam is able to just hit those high hands enough to get it to ricochet out of play for Oregon State. You'll see that time in and time out by her. And you can see just the Wildcat offense is potent enough that you could say that they're relatively easy or able to hang with anyone if they can get the pass to get them in system. Yeah, they definitely had a, a lot of offensive weapons and power at the net. But for years, K-State was so good in the back line, and they have had such a history of the Barrows that have been among the best in the Big 12, if not the country. And no secret that the Wildcats, when they have struggled here the last year or so, it's been inconsistency in that back row. They just haven't been able to find that next great libero. Yeah, it's definitely been a concern for K-State. Not to say that they don't work on it. Know that there isn't talent there. It's just not as good or as consistent as it needs to be. Colleen and Fairfield back as passers now with Dixon. Both have served as a libero for K State over the last year and a half. Peyton Williams on a quick set. 
basketball player, star center for Jeff Mitty's Wildcats, who doubles as an all-conference volleyball player. Goings blocked hard, but Massey right there to cover. Back to Goings, a touch by K-State. Mutiri through the block. I really like Sarah Dixon's decisions here offensively. She's having the ability to make more choices at the net. Shallow serve by Dixon. Going through the block, tied at the net. Williams touched it. Zumach unable to finish. Miscommunication on that one up over the net, and Zumach there to push it down. You almost thought that was going to be a missed opportunity for K-State. That set for Zumach wasn't high enough. They had their chance to get a big kill by Zumach, but good job. Just keeping it in play, no air. Another shallow serve, there's Zumach. K-State may have found something here. Goings long, touch call by the floor official. And the tower official, Patricia Rolf, is gonna call over Dan Hauser, the floor official, to confer as to whether or not there was a touch. Again, the line judge over on the far side ruled touch, but it didn't look like the officials in the middle felt that there was. We'll see you get the call here. Mark Bernhardt's already got the challenge card ready to deliver it if needed if this call goes against him. Hmm. And again, another discussion. This is a bit unusual. Normally, you don't see that. Officials talking about it. We'll get a look at it ourselves here and see if there was a touch here. After some discussion, they'll say, no touch. And here comes the challenge car. It looks like when the ball comes over the blocker's hands, there's a little bit of change in the rotation. But Now, one of the changes to the review system this year, the challenge review system, is that on this play, so Mark Bernard's going to challenge that it was touched. The touch, and whether it was in or out, although that doesn't really apply here because the ball was obviously out, but that can be reviewed at the same time by the official that reviews it. So if Mark Bernard says, all right, well, I'm reviewing the touch, and then let's just say for some reason it looks like it actually fell in, the floor official can say, all right, the touch, what you challenged was not there, but it did fall in, and therefore it is a point. So that's a little bit of an adjustment to the rule, as most of the challenges have been on either a touch or a no touch or in or out. So they decided to kind of combine it into one play if the official sees a clear and obvious error. Now we will get a touch, so a late change. So no need to challenge by Mark Bernard. This was the play before, so here we go. Here comes the swing at the net. Does Zumach or Williams touch it? Well, at that speed, we would have no <laughs> idea. And that looks like it's pretty much with the touch Zumach yep. there. And now I think Susie Fritz is going to challenge. Yes. Now, was there enough to overturn is the question. Dan Hauser will go and have a look. We'll get a word as to whether it was confirmed. Oh, a net call. No. Because you saw Zumach earlier in that replay when we watched it. She thought that when the setter went up to play that Got ball, it. but the ball was in the net. It didn't look like. So let's go back to that replay. Well, we'll take a look here at what Dan Hauser sees, I suppose. I'm going to look at the very start of this was Oregon State into the net before we even got to the point of a touch. So it's right here on the yep. joust. You see Zumox wanting it, but it doesn't look like. You have to go back before this. 
the play before that joust, the very start of that is where there might have been a net violation. Pretty clearly that K-State touched it there, but as the question is before this, and you can see Zumbach gesturing right there that she said that the center was into the net. I think the ball hit the net, but I'm not sure that she had hit the net. Certainly doesn't look like it. Well, Dan Hauser still taking a look at this. This is also part of that challenge play is that you can look at the same play or different aspects of the same play. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing that Mark Bernard would have challenged. And they're going to give the point to Oregon State. My guess would be there was no clear evidence that there was a touch there. After all of that, back to action. And Mutiri gets another kill. Mutiri in the double figures with 11 kills now, nine digs. Bryn Carlson in. Place with Juliet. Yeah. Interesting decision. Carlson tested right away and unable to get the block. Gravely. Bradley with six kills, make it five, I should say, five kills. Hitting just 188. Again, Oregon State hitting just 155 as a team. Williams, a big swing, and gets the finish. I feel like they want me to play. It's <laughs> a couple that's come over here. <laughs> K-State, after all those issues, swinging offensively the first two sets, hitting 545 in the third. Under down, long. Well, when an offense is clicking, that usually means a setter is clicking. And for more on Sarah Dixon, let's go to Anna Christensen. Thanks, Brian. A standout offensive players have been a big part of K-State's strong start to the season. And one key player to that has been Sarah Dixon, who was awarded the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week last week. Coach Susie Fritz said earlier this season that her best qualities this year have been situational awareness and a feel of the game. Back to you, Brian. Uh, certainly understanding where the ball needs to go. You mentioned we talked about that at the end of the second set about Dixon making some really good choices that even threw up. I mean, the predictability of it all was thrown into question, and that what makes a good setter, right? Yeah. Unpre being unpredictable. And you really credit K-State's passing a lot better, a little bit more aggressive on defense. So, you know, in turn, giving Dixon an opportunity to mix it up, and that will eventually pay off and open up the hitters as the game progresses. Wildcats out of sorts as soon as we laud Dixon. Didn't look like that was the right call at all. And now K-State gives up back-to-back -back points. The Beavers have tied it. K-State really needs to keep their foot on the gas pedal here. Stay aggressive. Another great up for the back row of Oregon State. Carlson a heavy hand, but it's over the net to K-State. Sam Bopi lucky to get a shoulder on it. Bennett pounds it down. Yeah, Bryn Carlson set up a little bit too far inside and gave Bennett that line shot. She saw that opening and was foaming at the mouth. Bennett's had a huge night. Eight kills, hitting 353 from the right. Carlson wide of the mark.
And Susie Fritz will use a timeout. A 5-0 blitz by Oregon State in the third set. Earlier in set one and halfway through set two. K-State opened up red hot offensively in this third set. Had six kills offensively, hitting 500. But since then, two airs, no kills. And the Wildcat defense reeling a bit as the Beavers find their rhythm a bit. And we'll see how the Beavers continue out of this timeout. She had in the back row and a good serve as an ace for Oregon State. Third of the night, second of this set. Bit of an unusual serve receive here. You see they're really trying to hide Bryn Carlson. And the Cats Oregon. made a sub in that spot. So far it is yet to pay off. Bennett with really nothing in front of her smashes it home. Yeah, big hole in the block by K-State. Bennett takes advantage. And here comes Shulians back in. 7-0 run by the Beavers. Susie Fritz kind of giving it to Bryn Carlson as she comes out. Ritiri down the line and in. Great shot by Ritiri. I like the line shot by the left-handed right side player. Second team All-American last year at Charles Page High. And now 12 kills hitting 333 from the right. Under down, great dig by Mutiri. How about that dig for your first ever double-double? And he gets turned into a point on a blocking oh, error yeah. by the Beavers. Yeah, it all starts with that defense. Great play by Mutiri in the back row. Let's see if she can give K-State a little fire here. Fantastic dig. Stood her ground, stuck her, stuck her arms out, nice platform. The 6'2 freshman has been quite open about the fact she takes pride in that being able to stay on the roof floor for all rotations. Fairfield sliding in to get the up. And then K-State Sulians on a simple roll shot finds Pater. Good decision by Shulians. A little out of system defensive transition play here. Just nice real shot right into the heart of the court. Two back-to-back -back great digs of different varieties for K-State. Serve hits the tank, doesn't go over for Mutiri on air. Wildcats an ace, four airs tonight with serve and a side out to the Beavers. Ooh, if that would have rolled over, what an ace that would have been. That would have been all tied. Back slide, Sam Bothy had to hurry to get there. Back to Bennett, blocked it off of her out of bounds. Shulians put it right back in her face. We thought Bennett really thought she saw that open line shot. Shulians closes her hands, presses over the seam there. Nice job. Miscommunication between Sheehan and Shell. And the Wildcats tie it up. Wildcats hitting 318 now here in this third set. Good aggressive serve from Shulians. Popped by Zumach. Did she come over the net? No. Back row attack as Sheehan went up to play it. Not much she could do in that situation. Another good serve by Shulians. That's the X factor, what she brings beyond the offense. San Bothy hard off the defense, and the Beavers reeling a bit here, forced to call a timeout. That Wildcat offense finally finding their footing, hitting well over 300 in this third set, and now in front by two. And they're really giving themselves um, more opportunity by getting into system right off the bat and then just playing that defense. They've really stepped it up in the back row. It's made all the difference. Goings off the touch of the block. 
able to get the kill. So as you're saying, basically to avoid the block on offense, you get a good set, get in rhythm, it allows the setter then to pick a better option that isn't hitting into a block. Yeah, more options available. Again, they're able to get their middles more involved. Williams has had a few kills. Tambothy's had a few. And then that opens up the other hitters. And it's making Oregon State make a, a, a decision on their block and slowing them down a little bit. Okay, State unable to get a good pass and set there. Zumok hits it way to the net. So the Beavers with the timeout and two straight points. And a service there at a bad time for Massey. Three aces, five errors on the night for the Beavers, but that's an inopportune time for an error, having just put up two straight points to tie it. Gimesh, serving specialist in for K-State. Ran some points earlier in this set. Caught the tape and gets the ace. Gimesh has a great jump float is able to just get it right over the net there she caught a little bit of the net that's so hard to pass off of Native of, of hungary k-state's had such a great relationship over the years with that country in particular not insisting the beavers go to underdown zumach through the block able to force kill number 10 Smart play by Zumok, not trying to do too much. You know, in those kind of out-of-system out plays, you want to try to go up there and rip it. But she does a nice job just hitting into those hands and making Oregon State make the air. Seventh time this year that Zumok's been in double figures. Again, the serve by Gibesh has Oregon State out of sorts, and they do get the kill, though, with Bennett. An incredible shot as she was fading out of bounds. And that's 10 kills for Bennett. That puts her in double figures for just the second time in her career. Zubak dug out by Massey. Goings way off the net. Uteri blocked Bradley and Goings. That's a one point set. Time out, K-State. The 10th block of the night by the Beavers. I like the idea of getting Uteri involved there because you really thought the ball was probably going to Zumok on the outside. But I think that set was just a little too low for Uteri to, to do much with it, so she hits it lower into that block. It's been a good night for Uteri overall. 12 kills, 280 hitting, 11 digs, her first ever double-double. Freshman continues to shine here in the early going. She's been everything that has been advertised and more. And a conference that's loaded with young talent. Uteri certainly will have a say in the Big 12 Freshman of the Year race, the all-freshman team race as well. You look at some of these teams across the conference and how they've fared in the early going. Baylor and Texas both Top 15 teams, Iowa State, K-State for a while, both receiving votes. The Jayhawks were up high ranked and now have fallen out of the polls. It's still a very good team. As you take a look at the conference standings as of today, now there you see K-State atop the Big 12. The one of only two teams with just one loss. And you look down the row there, you know, several of these teams have played some pretty highly ranked opponents early in the season. Zumok able to tool the block. 11 for Zumok. That's really one of the reasons why the Big 12 can be so very tough. And but you can also carry a pretty high RPI when you when you look at overall the games and opponents that the teams have faced. There's 10 teams in the Big 12, and only nine of them play volleyball. The Oklahoma State does not field a volleyball team, so. Only nine opponents in conference play. It's a round robin, home and away. Goings through the block. 
or underneath the block, you should say, I guess. See Williams there coaching New Cherry up a little bit on that block. They both got pulled away a little bit from the net, and that ball was able to sneak right through. Beavers down a point and sort of. Zuma for the right side. Well, it was a slow start as far as K-State finding Zubok, but that is turned around now. You have to know in crunch time situations, that ball's likely going to Zubok for that very reason right there. Time out by Oregon State. Zubok, 12 kills, hitting 333. She's two digs away from a double-double. You see Shulians and Susie Fritz having a conversation. But early, remember in set one, Zumach had just three swings. That largely because K-State couldn't pass when she was on the front line. But now you can see Dixon finding Zumach no matter where she is on the court. Yeah, it's really helped propel this, this team. And they're going to rely heavily on her all season long. And you just know in order for K-State to go, they have to go through her in, in some regard just because of what she provides for the team. Well, you know very well, two-time All-American yourself, and pride, I know you prided yourself on being that outside hitter that, hey, we need a kill, give me the ball. And K-State's kind of been waiting for Zubok to assume that personality consistently every night, every set, every play for a very long time. And it's not, to, it's not a slight towards her, it's just the natural maturation of her. And not all of it's her doing, as you mentioned. Passing in the back row, a big part of that setting as well. Yeah, but you've really seen her step into that no role question. early on this season so far. And you hope that she just continues to grow and, and, and continue that role for the, this team. Even through the Valleys, which will be there as part of your season. Under down, blocked, but over on the King State side. And it's a Beaver side out as Oregon State has pulled with a point. This is a critical third set as the winner will be in the driving spot, needing only one more set win to prevail. Shoot the odds. Back to shoot the odds. A new setter on for Oregon State. More on that in a second. Under down, down the left line, put up near the net. Williams jousts it over and it falls in. You can't help but think that was a missed opportunity for Oregon State. Fortunate miscommunication for K-State. Take advantage, game point, or set point. Well, they have changed setters, Oregon State has, in this set. Sheehan has come out. Montana Gubrud, who was a junior transfer, who was with them in the spring, is now on the court. Under down on the left side, finishes. And here comes Sheehan back in, so a little 6-2, perhaps. Sheehan in the back, Gubrud up front. Looks often see teams switch philosophies too much in the middle of a match. Set point for K-State. Nutiri. Second attempt. This one slides in. Nutiri is tied her career high with 13, and the Wildcats win this third set, 25-23. Nice decision by Nutiri. Smart veteran. Liking or close to their offensive output. And that got their number up to 198 as a team hitting percentage now. Kill numbers have evened up a little bit. With a dig number quite significant for the Cats. We'll see how it holds up as we move along. Yeah, definitely more defensive effort by K-State doing a really a great job being relentless on defense, really giving Sarah Dixon an opportunity to get that offense rolling.
Devin Fairfield will be the one to serve it up for K-State as they'll have the serve to start the fourth set. K-State wins this set, they'll win the match. Oregon State, if they win it, would go to the fifth for the fourth time this year already. And this number set number or match number seven. And a blocking air on K-State. It's gonna go on San Bothy. Good start by Oregon State. Nice pass. You see that ball go out to Bennett on the right. K-State's had only two matches that have gone beyond three sets this year. Serve to Seabear by Zumak. And an ace for the Beavers. That's their fourth. Both of the matches that went beyond three sets this year for K-State were four sets, and both winners. Utiri, who's adding to a big night, unable to finish there. Quick set, middle, but a block by Sanbopi. It's eighth block for Sanbopi. Tenth for the Cats. And that is why she is in the game right there. Wildcats have much bigger middle blockers, but not many with the blocking ability of San Bothy. Thrown all the way out left. The Goings and another block for San Bothy. The Goings just hasn't been able to find that rhythm. The sets have been a little bit off for her. Having a tough time adjusting and really getting any heat behind the ball. She head back. Looks like in a 5-1. Materia copper tape on the serve. Bennett rockets it down. 11 for Bennett, who's had a huge night, which he's been given the chance. She really does a good job of contacting that ball high, using that full, deep corner shot there. Mom was an Oregon State player back in the late 80s. Oh, good palm up by Massey. One on one block by Sam Bopi, hunting for that 10th block, but just wide of the mark. It was a great palm by Massey. Sam Bopi trying to get double figure blocks for the first time in her career. She's tied a career best with nine. Julian's blocked by Gravely and Bennett. Fourth block for Gravely. See Coach Fritz out here pleading with her team to get involved. Got to cover your teammates. Caught napping a little bit on that one. Shulian's tools a block. You got to tip your cap to Shulian's. I don't think going into the match that Kasich would have predicted she would have had 32 swings, but yet here we are. Yeah, she's really had to deal with some out-of-system plays. But credit her, she's hanging tough there. Made some good serves, had a couple of good digs in the back line. Fairfield steps in here. Now to Zumok, hunting for the corner, but Underdown was all over it. Here's Goings, caught the hands it looked like, yep. Yeah, really as a hitter, if you're struggling a little bit, you know, but you still have to find ways to contribute, and she's doing a nice job of staying present. Played some great defense, some great serves. Morgan State with a good lead in a must win set four. Zumach, big, heavy swing. Brown crashing into the barriers on the far side, but unable to get it back in play. So Zumach with 13. And hitting 346. Colleen asking for the towel. Himesh struggled with her serve in set one and two, but in set three, really ripped off a couple of great rotations. Has one ace here tonight. Goings unable to get it over on the left. Goings kind of coming apart here a little bit later in this match. She leads with 13 kills. Leads Oregon State anyway. 
but hitting just 189. Back to her. This time, kill number 14 off the top of the block. I like that repeat by Sheehan. You know, giving her, her hitter, her go-to hitter, more confidence. Goings pop for 25 in that match against Iowa State, that five-set win against the Cyclones. 25 and 17, by the way. 25 kills, 17 digs. Battled above the net. Knocked over to Oregon State side. Under down, blocked down by Peyton Williams. You mentioned her earlier, but Williams has been a factor since subbing in. She's really made a difference, you know, offensively, but also defensively at the net. She's nice hands, presses them low and tight. Well, that's her first block. She's touched a number of shots across the net. Zubak, good job reacting at the tip. Wildcats looking to tie, under, down, misses up the sideline. And the early Beaver lead has evaporated. You see Oregon State making a lot more errors as this game progresses. Five kills, five errors alone here in this third set for the Beaver offense. Great shallow serve by Sarah Dixon. That has been a key part of the Cat offense. Mutiri, though, blocked. What a block by Bradley and Underdown. I like to see Mutiri try to hit a little bit higher. That block was right in front of her. She you know, has to be able to see that in front of her and then try to hit those high hands. Uh, everything was so perfect leading up to that point. Service here by the Beavers gives the ball right back. Zumok to serve. A dig away is Zumok from her third double-double this season. It would be the eighth of her career. Richard Sr. from Minnesota. On the slide, tipped over by Shell. Quick set, Williams. Dixon got to it somehow, but nobody else can get it up. And the Beavers push back in front. That wasn't, wasn't quite right for Williams, not high enough. Dixon goes right to her to ask and confer as to where that ball needs to be. Julian's having to adjust. Mutiri. And she'll get the kill, and a new career best for Mutiri at 14 kills. Mutiri, that set was pretty fast, but she does a great job of getting her feet there. She only was able, really, to get a step close on her approach, but nice high, higher shot than she did earlier where she got blocked. Changed it up a little bit, went down the line. Diving dig by Zubak. How about that for number 10? Over the net. Into the block for Shulians. Bayerfield puts it up to Butiri. Tools the block and gets the finish. Another long rally that goes the home team way. Yeah, again, you see that that's a veteran play that, that Butiri is able to make smart, a little out of system, just using the block in front of her. Shallow serve by Fairfield and an overpass. Back to Butiri, down the line, and it looked to be out. Just out from Butiri, hunting for that corner. 15 kills, 290 hitting for Butiri. Service error by the Beavers, get the ball right back. Terry now to serve. Goings into the block. Nobody else can get there for K-State. 15 for Goings. We can't help but feel she's had a pretty good night. You know, 15 kills, but 
pretty quiet too. Just not quite those explosive kills. Shillian's through the block. Back to goings. Zumach digs this one. Long run for Dixon. And easily flat batted away by the Beavers. Yeah, tough play by Dixon. And she just tries to throw it up there to give the hitter a chance to swing. Just a little too tight. Julian's maybe her best swing of the night. Yeah, credit Dixon in that set. You saw Julian's point to her setter and tell her that's the set she needs. Double figures for Shulian's for the fourth time this year. And Bennett, a rare mistake. Bennett has done a masterful job of either tooling that block or catching high hands, but that time over everyone. Yeah, she got a little under the ball. So K-State by point now, back to goings, and she'll even it up. And here we go again. Sheehan will come out. And in is Daniela Vargas, who is a senior right side hitter. And you've got in the back line, Gubru to serve. Well, with Zumach in the front row now, you think they want to put up maybe a bigger block. It doesn't matter as Zumach finishes. A great side out by K-State. And thinking about it, I think you might be right as to the thought process there as to why you take Sheehan out. If you feel they're relatively even, her and Gubru. Looking for something to slow down the left side attack. Two walkout players collide. Colleen does well to cover. And a smart play by Dixon to hit it high to get everybody reset. Then Goings airmails it out of bounds. Another rally that's won by K-State. And we hit a timeout in the fourth. The Wildcats by two. Lookman Diggs, her first ever double-double, and a career high in kills. He meshed the serve out of the timeout. Again, Gubrud setting, and she sets up Goings on the left. And Goings with a match high, 17 kills. Yeah, much better set for her. Gave her a chance to take advantage of Dixon blocking in front of her. Zumach, set was a bit high, controlled over. Mistake by the Beavers, and Zumach makes them pay. It's not often that Zumach is forced to tip it over, and the Beavers missed a wonderful chance to tie the set. Zumach now with 15, hitting 367. The shallow serve has been a difference in tonight's match. Mutiri, another kill. A great transition out of defense there. Fairfield able to give Mutiri a nice set. Using those hands. She's hit that line shot a lot here tonight. Sheehan back in. Up into the front row. Dixon still serving. Sarah Dixon has been the best at the shallow serve that K-State's employed the last two sets. It's really been effective. Does not look like Oregon State has handled it well. Another big block. You know, you think back to it, Liz, the early, early part of this match, especially set one. The Bobcat sets were being handled with ease in the back row by Oregon State. K State serving has gotten better, but then on top of that, this shallow serve has thrown the Beavers for a loop. Yeah, they're they're not getting that pass right up to Sheehan in the front row. Dixon this time unlucky cut the tape. 
Well, much like free throws, we started talking about it. Then Jinxed them. Yep. Beavers a little bit discombobulated on who's to come in. Now they'll rotate in. And Mark Bernard has done wonderful things for the Beavers since he took over. Mark Barnard is in his third year. Longtime coach of the Australian national team. Nuteri is blocked down. And he's got quite the coaching staff as well. Ron Zerver, Zerver in his third year as an assistant, part of the International Volleyball Hall of Fame, just inducted here in the last year. You see him to the lower right of your screen. They're standing behind Mark Barnard. And there's no tougher conference in America than the Pac-12 in volleyball. The Big 12, Big 10 right there. Those are your big three. And timeout by K-State as the Beavers starting to Rally a bit here in this fourth set. A 3-0 run by the Beavers to trim into that K-State lead. The Wildcats, as you see at the bottom, lead two sets to one. If they should win this fourth set, the match would be ever would be over. Yeah, Oregon State's very used to these kind of tough, long matches and kind of hanging tough in there. It'll be interesting to see kind of how K-State responds here in this fourth set. Well, the Wildcats, when they needed to, they've been able to go to the go-to player in Kylie Zumok. And the other big storyline tonight has been Gloria Butiri, the freshman for K-State. As advertised, K-State expected big things from her this year, and she's had her first career double-double and a career-high 16 kills. Yeah, they really haven't had to rely on her so far this this year, but a nice showing here by Butiri, just stepping into that role being that hitter available for Dixon and really having that hot hand. You see there are quite a wide range of shots too. And, and the freshman has shown great poise. Uh, being able to change, knowing when to change up her shots. I mean, you can count on one hand the mistakes that she makes attacking the block. Yeah, she's doing a nice job making smart, what we would call a veteran plays, you know, seeing the block in front of her and using what she has available. And it's definitely paying off with those 16 kills. And Susie Fritz and the Wildcats hoping Butiri paired with Zumok is something special for them in a special bounce back season. Williams throwing over the net. Oregon State comes back and it's out of bounds. Point for K-State. K-State by two points to the end of this fourth set, trying to find a way. And Zumok down in the back row. Neither team hitting well in this fourth set. The defense has taken over, and an ace by Zumok. She slips it in, and the sideline right in front of Oregon State head coach Mark Barnard. Yeah, that's a bit of a dagger for Oregon State. A missed opportunity there. Great serve by Zumok. <laughs> Under down comes right back. Beavers trying to rally. K-State trying to hold them off. For more of what the Wildcats were talking about in the last huddle, here's Anna Christensen. Thanks, Brian. In the huddle, Coach Susie Fritz telling her team to calm down and play their game. She wants them to avoid pileups and trust each other to do their role. Back to you, Brian. We've heard that last phrase, do your role, all night from the K-State bench. Sulian's just tapped one over and nearly fell. Quick set, Williams finds an open spot. Smart play by Williams. That set, again, wasn't quite what she needed, but instead of tipping it short right where all of Oregon State was, she does tips it nice and deep in that corner. Oregon State doesn't have a chance to run that down. See the athleticism of Williams hanging the air and find a spot. Yeah. A young lady that spends virtually no off season honing whatever sport she's working on. It, it's so hard. You think about Division One athletes and what's asked of them, but also the natural progression of a Division One athlete and the amount of time they have to spend at one sport to be so very good. Williams, with virtually no off season, is an all conference level in both volleyball 
and basketball in the Big 12, it is unheard of and has never been done. Yeah, and it's, it's scary to think if she did commit all of her time to one sport alone, what her potential could be. But she does a great job balancing between the two and really, has really made an impact on volleyball. And I, I know on the basketball court, she's done the same. All Big 12 player on the Big 12 on the women's basketball side, averaged nearly 15 points a game, seven rebounds a contest, had nine games of 20 points or more, and she is going to be the featured along with Kayla Goff, the star players for the basketball team when they begin practice in October and then the season in November. In the meantime, she was an all-conference pick in volleyball last year. Lining up in the middle, averaging nearly two kills a set, hitting 309 and nearly a block a set last year for the Wildcats with Susie Fritz. And she's had a good night tonight off the bench. Five kills, hitting 500. Wildcats trying to close out the Beavers in four. Bennett at the middle comes through. 12th kill of the night for Bennett. And the hitting percentage back over 300. Yeah, they haven't gone to her here lately. We'll see if they try to get her more involved. Quick set, Sam Bopi. Unable to finish. Beavers out of sorts, though. Free ball to K-State. Here's shooting on. Near the net, popped over. Another free pass to the Wildcats. Tight set for shooting on. Uses the left hand. The Beavers still out of sorts. And a big block, Sam Bopi, with their 10. Nice block by Sam Bopi. Out of system play, Goings has nowhere to go. Good eyes by Sambothi. A new career high for the junior middle blocker from Lee Summit West High. Sambothi with double figures and blocks. K-State with 14 as a squad, timeout Beavers. And the Cats three away from a four set win. And Oregon State has really struggled to find an answer when K-State has really kind of pressed them offensively, defensively. Oregon State, we're finding them making more errors, and that's, you know, it's important K-State has been able to play their game and, and making Oregon State adjust, and they've made a lot of errors down the, down the line here. That 10 errors in this fourth set by the Beavers, 11 kills, so hit percentage is not great. Now, K-State hasn't been overwhelming either a night for a team that's hit 286 as a squad, the best of the Big 12, and among the top 20 in the country. K-State hitting just 176. But they will gladly take that if it meant a win. Yeah, sometimes those wins are not pretty, but a win is a win. Well, against the better teams, you're usually not going to hit well. Mutiri. Already working on a career night. Back to serve it up. 16 kills, 11 digs, five blocks for Butiri. The service error. Three aces tonight, six errors for the Wildcats, four aces, seven errors for the Beavers. And a two-point set here, and taking no chances. Susie Fritz will sub in for Butiri with Jackie Smith, a defensive specialist. Sophomore, or Richard freshman, I should say. Massey will go to Fairfield. Shulians, the finish! She's really finishing strong, struggled early on, but has really come on here lately and provided quite a spark for K-State. Ever since she was subbed out and then came back in, since she's come back in, she's been pretty dominant. Goings rockets at one. 18th kill of the night for Goings, a match high. Yeah, that line was available with Dixon in front of her. Again, good eyes by her, taking advantage of the smaller block. K-State brings in all three passers into the back line. Chileons is subbed out. Two points away, Wildcats trying to minimize the risk. San Bopi. Goings off the block. And it's a one point set in the fourth.
Who will Dixon go to? All starts with a good pass. Zubak, hard into the block, out of bounds, and it's back point. Mark Barnard pleading with his team, but why they didn't cover that. Yeah, it was right there available. Another miscommunication by Oregon State. A big point to allow to fall. Match point. Beavers need two straight to tie and force yet another fifth set match. And Gimesh to serve a difficult serve coming. Goings. And blocked! They move Peyton Williams out in front of Goings. She shuts it down. Huge block to finish the set. On the 15th block of the night by the Wildcats, K-State wins in four.